Okay. All right, so let's go over this and then I'll show you the video real quick. Okay, so this is for our do now. So, which type of tissue lines hollow organs? Why am I reading? I typed it. Somebody else read. Today will be the first one for me. What type of cartilage has the most plastic, elastic fiber? No, 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 no. Huh? The do now from today, oh, the seventh, not yesterday's exit. What type of tissue line is hollow organs uh, and the body cavity? and allow substance to move into and out of the body. Which one is that? Um, That's in the notes from yesterday. You looking at today's notes? Oh, okay. Somebody help them out with one? What's the answer for one? What do you have, Talia? B, epithelial, excellent. Remember I told you the epithelial tissues, they line the nasal cavity, the mouth also, any opening into the outside environment and going into the internal environment of the body. Epithelial cells are going to line there. So epithelial cells line the organs, hollow organs and body cavity. Okay, number two, Ted, what do you have for number two? Uh, Read it first. Which type of tissue is found in the midline of the body between our vertebrae? Posteriorly. And our pelvic skin tissue anteriorly. I said the elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage? Not quite. Who has something different? What do you have, Talia? Fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage. Excellent. Fibrocartilage is going to be that cushion that the body needs in the spine when we're running and also in the pelvis where the bones are connecting anteriorly. Fibrocartilage, excellent. We're gonna go through these in a minute in another question. Shall you do number three for me? Number three? Sebaceous? A, mm -mm. not cartilage. Our cartilage is not going to sweat. Our cartilage is not going to secrete oil. Today, would you give the three? Number three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Trinity. Mm -hmm. B, epithelial. That's part of our description for epithelial. I explained to you that sebaceous oil glands, when, we, when our skin starts to secrete oil, especially when kids go through puberty, oil ducts get clogged and that causes what? Acne. Acne, excellent. So that's gonna be our epithelial tissue. <coughs> number four. Prasane, you have number four or you didn't do it? You didn't do it, Talia, what you got? No, read it. Leukocytes. Leukocytes. Um, Thrombo. Thrombocytes and erythrocytes. I said Excellent. And you got erythrocyte all on your own. The only connective tissue that's going to be liquid is going to be blood. Cartilage is not liquid. The only one that's going to be liquid is blood. Fat is not going to be liquid. So that should be an easy one to remember. If it says it's liquid connective tissue, you should immediately know it's blood. And what's number five? Go ahead, Trinity. Which type of connective tissue is the collagen? Collagen. 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 Excellent. So, what do we say avascular means? What is it? Don't do this out. <laughs> what's avascular? No blood flow. No blood flow to a structure. So that's normal. If it were no blood flow to skin, that would not be normal and then the skin would die. But no blood flow to cartilage is normal. So not everything in the body is going to have blood flow coming to it. 
All right, so we got all of these, one through five. If you got it wrong, you got the right answer. Thank you. What's that? Oh. for you real quick. Switch screens. This video is going to show you how the epiglottis actually closes over the larynx when we swallow. Uh, Shani, can you turn out the light for me, please? And it's just a minute, 24 seconds, so it'll be quick. Thank you. Uh oh, where's my volume? Oh. Gotta start, sorry. I don't think I'm hooked up to the right audio. Sorry about that. I'm supposed to have tried this earlier and I forgot to. This one is the speaker. Oh, this is my speaker. There we go. Okay, I'm sorry, my apologies. Up, up against the roof of your mouth. There we go. Swallowing occurs in two stages, the oropharyngeal and esophageal stages. Don't worry about the vocabulary words they're using. At the start of the swallow, a food bolus is voluntarily pressed by the tongue up against the roof of the mouth and backwards towards the pharynx. In response to activation of pharyngeal pressure receptors, the swallowing center in the medulla initiates reflexes that prevent food entry into respiratory passageways. The uvula contracts, which blocks the nasal passages from the pharynx. The laryngeal muscles contract, closing the glottis at the top of the trachea by tightly aligning the vocal folds. The epiglottis swings down upon the closed glottis. With all airways blocked off, respiration is temporarily inhibited. As the upper esophageal sphincter relaxes, Pharyngeal contractions drive the bolus into the esophagus. The oral pharyngeal stage is done and breathing resumes. During the esophageal stage, a primary wave of peristalsis initiated by the swallowing center pushes the bolus through the esophagus. As the bolus travels through the esophagus, the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes, allowing the food to enter the stomach. If the bolus is sticky and adheres to the esophagus, secondary peristaltic waves triggered by the intrinsic plexus the point of distension, completely clear the esophageal lumen to finish the swallow. Good grammar and spelling. I need to show that again. But if you want to write essays that inspire. Yes, no. Okay, the link is in your notes. Thank you very much. Okay, so our video said something very interesting. Shani, can you turn the light back on for me? And I hope you caught it. Our video said something very interesting. It says that if something is sticky going into our esophagus, then the muscle contraction is a little thicker, a little stronger. I'm sorry? Yes. What might be sticky? Something that we would eat or chew. What might be sticky that might get stuck in our, air, our esophagus? Yes. Candy, yep, yeah. what else? Honey. What is it? Honey. Honey? Honey. Oh, honey, yeah, honey would definitely slow some things down. Anything else? Peanut butter. Peanut butter, excellent. Ew. Excellent. Some people like peanut butter, I like peanut butter. So those type of things get sticky, not get sticky. Those type of things are sticky, and they might start to go down slower or get stuck in our esophagus. That's when the smooth muscles have to contract a lot more. I don't know if you notice the difference or not, but the first video where the smooth muscle contracted to push the bolus down, the muscles were narrower. And the second video, the muscles looked like they bulged a little bit, they got a little bit bigger. So you need a little bit more muscle in order for that peristalsis to uh, push the bolus down into the stomach. Excellent point. So if it's sticky, candy, honey, what was the other one we said? Peanut butter, thank you. Candy, honey, and peanut butter. Those can be some sticky things that might get stuck in the throat. Another reason why you don't give kids candy, because they may not suck it, 
until the candy gets small enough that it doesn't get stuck in their esophagus. So some kids may start to choke and start to cough, so you have to make sure that doesn't happen. That's a good reason why you don't give kids candy. What significance? It said the uvula would raise up and close off the nasal cavity, the nasal cavity on top. Why is that significant? Shani? And what happens if it goes up in there? Excellent. So if you've ever been drinking or eating something and someone in your family made you laugh or you saw something funny and all of a sudden it doesn't just come out of your mouth but it comes out of your nose also, that's what occurred because you were swallowing and next thing you know you started laughing, that air release, and then instead of the uvula closing off the back of the nasal cavity, it opened up. And then that's when that food came out through your nose. Have you ever seen some um, magicians or something, they do tricks? and they'll swallow something and then bring it up? Yeah, that's nasty. But anyway, they do it. So they can swallow it, and they know how to control the muscles to make the uvula lift up, and then bring it up and out, and they'll blow it out through their nose. So I've seen those little tricks on TV. All right, you, you've seen it also? Okay. Yeah, it's weird. I think that's what they call them, weird tricks, weird human tricks. Okay, perfect. They have what? They do that card trick, yeah, I don't know how they do all of that stuff, but that's okay. All right, so let's go to our no, oh wait. The other thing we're supposed to do, epiglottis, elastic part of it. <clears throat> but this is the last one we forgot to do yesterday and I made myself a new. So Ted, read elastic part of it for me. This is in the notes for connective tissue from yesterday. Uh, elastic part of it has a collagen fiber and most elastic fiber is all three collagen. It's found in the outer ear and Epiglottis. Epiglottis and allows each structure to bounce back or return to its original shape. Excellent. So those instances, I don't know if you ever had a nano or auntie who would come over if you did something and they would twist your ear for punishment. It hurts, but your ear again bounces back because of all of the elastic cartilage in it. <clears throat> what instances have you seen people where they've done things to their ear that change the shape of it? What things have you seen? Say it louder, what do they do? They do the, um, they call it the third hole for the ear. It's like, that's the they use a big ear and it stretches out the whole bottom ear. Mm -hmm. So the lower lobe of the ear, if you've ever seen people, they'll put something small in it eventually, initially in order to stretch the hole open. Then as the hole stretches, they'll go and they'll put another earring in it that stretches it even wider. And some people, if you've seen them and they've been doing this for a long time, they stretch it so that it's a big round stretch of skin and then on the inside of that there's the earring that's staying in there to keep it open. And you can see how thin the skin gets around the ear, the lobe of the ear, when they stretch it out. So I'll try to find a picture of that to show you what I'm talking about in case you've never seen it. But that elastic cartilage that's in, excuse me, the elastic fibers that's a part of the elastic cartilage is what allows people to do that to their ears to change the shape of it because of the elastic fibers that are in it. All right, thank you so much. So, of the three cartilages that we discussed yesterday, elastic cartilage has the most elastic fibers. So that's the one that can stretch the most. Thank you so much. If you go to muscle tissue, please. For our muscle tissue. Uh, today, I'll start reading for me. You got it? From today's notes? Muscle produced movement and moves, moves the body and its parts. Actin and myosin. Myosis. Myosin. The, myosin? Mm -hmm. Myosin are the contractile. Contractile? Contractile units that produce movement. Muscle shortage and length, length because of the proteins. Actin. Actin and myosin. Mm -hmm. Muscle tissues also produce most of their heat in the body. Three types of muscle tissues exist. Good. Do the first one for me. Uh, skeleton muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, attaches to our skeleton has striations. Striations and is voluntary muscles. 
Arms hurt, muscles are muscles weak. Con consciously? Cons consciously controls through the central nerve system. Mm -hmm. Stra Striations. Striations are lines or strips that run the length of the muscle. Example of skeleton muscle includes biceps, triceps, and quads. Quadriceps. quadriceps. What does quad mean? Excellent. Quad means what? Where is it? Oh, not so on the side. No, front of the thigh. Front of the thigh is quadriceps, back of the thigh is hamstring. I need a model, please. Parsane, come help me, please. Come on, Talia. You can help me, too. Come help me. Can you take off your sweater? Is that a button up? Can you take off your sweater for me? Thank you. Hmm? Okay. So you're going to stand sideways, and you're going to face them. Well, you turn face me. Perfect. All right, so when we talk about the muscles, voluntary muscles, um, yes, do that. Pull your hand towards me. I'm going to add resistance. Okay, keep pulling. Yeah. I need to this way. Sorry. You're going to show off his muscle. Control yourself, Trinity. Okay, so here we go. We have our biceps muscle right here. The optimum biceps muscle is on the anterior part of the arm, triceps muscle is on the back of the arm. And order and deltoid is right here on the shoulder. Okay. In order for for saying to get more muscle definition, he has to work out not just his biceps, but he also has to work out his triceps. Because if the triceps keep pulling, if the triceps is flabby, he's not going to get that definition. So what does try mean? Three. Excellent. So there are three heads and three bellies to this triceps muscle. And biceps means two. So that means there are two heads and two bellies to this muscle. The only way he's going to get more definition, he has to work out the opposite muscle. Hold it, relax. Good. Stretch your arm out for me. Good. I'm going to push it down and keep it up, okay? Thank you. Here we have deltoid up here. You get more definition with deltoid when you're doing these elevation exercises. The only way he gets more definition here, relax. He's got, to, uh, he's got to work deltoid going in front, out to the side, and towards the back. Because deltoid, again, has three heads to it. Thank you. Put your arm down. Put your hand on my shoulder. You're going to hold on to me, okay? Mm -hmm. Lift your leg up. Bend your knee. Lift it up. Good. I'm going to push it down. I want you to keep it up. Hold on to me for balance. Okay? Thank you. Keep pushing. Perfect. This is quadriceps muscle. Voluntary. She's going to fall. <laughs> Push up. Okay. Voluntary muscle. So when we want to walk, when we want to move, voluntary muscle. She can control picking up her leg and holding it up. She's not going to be balanced, but she can control when she picks it up and holds it up. Voluntary muscle. Skeletal muscle. Put it down. Thank you. Thank you for saying. Skeletal muscle is voluntary. So we control what we lift, when we lift, how we lift it. It's voluntary, so that means the central nervous system is going to work with skeletal muscle to make sure that when we want to move, we can move. Got it? Yeah. Perfect. Ted, read cardiac for me. Uh, cardiac muscle is the heart. Yes, the heart is the muscle. Uh, cardiac muscle is striated. Striated and involuntary. 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 Involuntary muscles are muscles that contract independently of our cardiac muscle contractions are controlled by um, autonomic? autonomic nervous system. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to do anything to make our heart contract. Excellent. So now we get to the point where we have muscles that contract without us doing anything. They're going to contract naturally because the body's going to try to maintain homeostasis. So if you have a person who hyperventilates, when someone hyperventilates, what are they doing? Breathing in fast. Breathing in quickly. Excellent. They're taking in too much of what gas? Excellent. They're breathing in quickly, so they're taking in too much oxygen. So it may sound a little something like this. And that's how they can get in too much oxygen, and then the person will pass out. And they're passing out because of what? What is homeostasis trying to do? What is it? Balance what? You can't just say balance it. Balance what? Internal external. Internal external is too generic. What did you say today? I said carbon and oxygen. 
Excellent, carbon dioxide and oxygen. It's over there now on the white, on the white cabinet. Excellent, so when a person is hyperventilating, they're taking in too much oxygen. And that's when the body says, oh no, they're going to hurt themselves. It's not there? Thank you. That's when the body says, oh no, they're gonna hurt themselves. So the body will make the person faint so that they can stop breathing in so much oxygen and then balance out the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels. And when the person is revived, then they're breathing normally again. So that's that autonomic system. It works regardless of what we do. If a kid says, I'm gonna hold my breath until you give me what I want, and then they can't do it. So you just stand there and you wait for them. Okay, you finish? All right, good, come on, let's go now. He's still not getting it. It doesn't matter what they do. They cannot stop their heart. They cannot stop breathing. It's automatic. So the body's gonna keep doing it. We don't have to make our heart contract. It's gonna to respond to whatever's going on with us, okay? Last one, Trinity Reed, smooth muscle for me. Striations like the skeletal cardiac muscle. Go ahead. Smooth muscles is also involuntary mm -hmm. and contracts without moving. Um, um, consciously. Consciously. Consciously doing anything is controlled by the automatic, automatic nervous system. Examples of smooth muscle contractions are found in swelling, coughing, and dilation. It's found in the walls of the stomach, intestines. Excellent. So again, we have smooth muscle. It's also involuntary, just like the heart. So that means I don't have to think about trying to push my food after I chew it and swallow it down into my esophagus. Once that stimulation is there on the back of the tongue, the uvula, the uvula knows to respond, the larynx knows to respond, and everything moves automatically. There's stimulation that kicks in and moves it. We'll get into more details of that when we do the digestive system. So smooth muscle also involuntary. The only difference is it does not have striations. Got it? Does not have striations. So here's something, we're gonna come back to nervous tissue. The diagram at the bottom of the page, types of muscle tissue. You can see there are dark gray and light gray lines here. These are what's called striations. And you see the striations on the skeletal and the cardiac muscle, dark gray and light gray lines on the skeletal and cardiac muscle. Where you see these dark circles, those are nuclei. Nucleus is one, nuclei is plural. So you have a lot, oops, almost camera. So you have a lot of nucle nuclei in our muscles. And that's because each muscle fiber, each muscle bundle has to make sure it's getting what it needs from that nucleus. There's information stored in there. There's energy that's stored in that nucleus. Gotta make sure it's getting what it needs. In our smooth muscles, we see it is not striated. It does not have the dark gray and light gray lines. It is not striated. So simple question. Which muscle type? is not striated. Perfect. Simple question, which muscle type is voluntary? Should be writing this, Shondi and Ted. Thank you. Should be writing this. Go ahead, Trinity. Perfect. Simple question, which muscle type is involuntary? We can't control it. Which one would that be today? Hmm? Which one would be involuntary? Involuntary? Uh-huh. Would it be the smooth muscle? Would it be what? The smooth muscle? Yep. Is that the only one? Um, and uh, 
part of you. Excellent. Nice save. Nice save. Perfect. All right. Next one. Which muscle type is found? Camera, yeah. In the digestive tract. Okay. Ted, what's that one? Uh, Found in the digestive tract. Oh, yeah. No, you must have. If you ate someone's heart, yeah. that's not good. Although there are people Table. who do eat animal hearts. You had turkey heart? Yeah, it's a little thing. Yeah, I usually cook mine, like, you know, turkey Thanksgiving and stuff. Yeah. Cook it, boil it, season it, chop it up, and I put it in my stuffing. Absolutely. Go ahead, Ted, cook it. Go ahead, Ted, cook it. All right, last one. Which type of muscle is attached to our skeleton. Yes, it's on the cabinet. Okay, what's that one, Shandi? Last one. What type of muscle is attached to our skeleton? Excellent. Skeletal muscle. Thank you. All right, so make sure you get these. So this is just three types of muscles that we have in our body. Simple distinctions between each of them so that you know when you hear the description, when you read the description, exactly what it is. Perfect. You got these first thing? Excellent. Okay. One more minute. You got all of them, Shandi? Thank you. Another 30 seconds. 10. Nine. Nervous tissue for me? Nervous, nervous tissue is the most complex tissue in the body, it specializes in communicating with every part of the body during and treating, interrogating, and reacting to its Its function is to communicate and coordinate complex messages throughout the body to maintain any function. The primary nerve cell is called the neutron. neutron. No. Neuron, there's no T, neuron. Neurons can generate the speed and certain send. Send. Okay. Send nerve impulses or messages throughout the body by passing the nerve impulse or message to another neuron and on the border of the tissue over here. Excellent, thank you. So our neurons can communicate directly with an organ or it can pass the information on to another neuron. 
So our nervous tissue is a very specialized set of tissues. The nervous system is very, very com complicated. When I was in graduate school and I had to study the nervous system, to me it was like building a stereo, like the old fashioned stereos from scratch and you gotta do all the wiring and everything. Very complicated from my perspective. You guys, some of you may find it easy, especially if you like to build stuff, but we're gonna go through it in a little bit of detail. So neuron is a specific cell for a nervous tissue. What's the cell called that's a bone, uh, bone cell? Psych is most definitely in it, but what's the name of the uh, bone cell? What's the medical term for bone cell? Come on, you're right there, Ted. Osteocyte, excellent. So a neuron is a nerve cell, but it doesn't have the word site attached to it, like our osteocyte or our adipocyte. What's an adipocyte? Goes with adipose? What's an adipocyte? Adipocyte, you got it, Talia? Oh, oh, you got it, Shami? We did it yesterday. What's the adipocyte? Yep, yesterday. Oh, fat cell. Fat cell, excellent. What's an erythrocyte? Erythrocyte. Okay, Oh, you got that one? Red blood cell. Thank you. Okay, that, Talia, this one is all you. This one is all you. What's a leukocyte, Talia? A leukocyte is a white blood cell. Excellent, excellent. Oh. So in those instances, yes, all, all about to leave today. In those instances, we have cells that have the word sight in them. So we know that they are cells. Neuron does not end in sight. So we have to remember that a neuron is a nerve cell. Everybody got it? Yeah. Neuron is a nerve cell. It doesn't have the word sight attached to it. Okay, so uh, neurons can communicate to the organ or directly to each other. Its function is to communicate and coordinate complex messages. All right, so complex messages. Let's see. Central nervous system, when we want to do something with our voluntary muscles, we can do it with our voluntary muscles. We're controlling that. Farsane, mask up, please. There you go. Ted's doing his little dance. Excellent. For our autonomic nervous system, those are the things that we don't have to control. So when our digested food is moving from our small intestines into our large intestines, there's absolutely nothing that we have to do. It goes all by itself if we have a healthy digestive tract, okay? We don't have to do anything for that. On the next page, I have a picture for you of a neuron. What happened? Look at what? Gus. Oh, Gus. <laughs> yes, Gus is on the page. Wait, so wait, wait, wait. Is it Gus or Gussie? It's it's, you call it technically, it's Gussie because of the way the pelvis is shaped. We'll get into that, but technically, it's Gussie. Yeah, technically, it's Gussie because of the way the pelvis and the, the, the sides are shaped. All right, so look for our neuron. You are not responsible at this point to know all of the names of the parts of the neuron. You're not responsible for that at this point. We will use this diagram again when we get to the nervous system. So I just wanted you to see what a neuron looks like, okay? So when we have more than one neuron together, this cell body up here will speak to another neuron that has dendrites coming off on this side. And then the other end of this will be a cell body with another nucleus. Got it? So it will be head communicating with tail. And that's if we have more than one neuron. I'm sorry? It's the way it's drawn. I'm sure someone may have had that idea when they did some sci-fi movie. I'm sure they did. It just looks like a bird that's talking to Okay. An alien cell. So this is a picture of our neuron. What I'd like for you to do for our picture of Gus or Gussie, whichever name you like, if you have colored markers, and we still have to do that exit ticket, if you have colored markers, what I'd like you to do is use your colored marker to show where the cartilage is going to be found on the skeleton, just as a guide to help you remember. 
So if we do fibrocartilage, we would do one color here, and then we would also do it in between our vertebra. See what I'm saying? Let me get a little closer, there we go. This is not coming up too good in color, but you get the idea of what I want you to do, right? And then when you label it, just bring your arrow down, and this is going to be fibrocartilage. Got it? Then you can take another color. Farsane, you with us? Come on, honey. Farsane, thank you. You can take another color and go into those joints where we have our hyaline cartilage. Remember we said at the hip, in between the femur and the tibia. We also said up here in the shoulder joint, that's going to be our hyaline cartilage. We also said hyaline cartilage is going to be found where? In our upper body. Now, shoulders are already highlighted for our shoulder joints. Elbows. Elbows. No, not elbows. Not neck. Oh. Ah, come on, girl. Our nose. So draw that long nose in for hyaline cartilage. All right. That's in red also. Then we set our sternum. Remember the cartilage that connects our ribs to our sternum? So just highlight a couple of places on our sternum with the cartilage attached to the rib and the sternum. And then when you label it, <coughs> bless you. Excuse me. Thank you. That's going to be a hyaline cartilage. Got it? Perfect. And then the last one is what? What's our last cartilage? Elastic cartilage. Excellent. So our elastic cartilage, where can we put it on our skeleton? We have to draw it in. What are we drawing in? Talia? The spine No, our spine is already there. What are we drawing in for our elastic cartilage? We're not going to draw in our epiglottis. So what are we drawing in? Talia? Oh. Wait, 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 wait. Our ear. Ear, thank you. No problem, that's why we got notes. So in our side view of Gussie, let's give Gussie a little ear over here. And you can just estimate where it would be. Got it? And that's gonna be our elastic cartilage. That's why I said if you have different color pens, you can mark them up in different colors. So for me, I use purple for my fibrocartilage at the pubic symphysis, as well as my intervertebral disc. I use red for my hyaline cartilage. That was for my nose. Remember, just the tip of the nose is cartilage. When you get to the bridge of the nose, that's nasal bone. I also use it for my joint, my joints and my shoulder joint, my hip joint, and my knee joint. Got it? So this will be a quick reference to help you remember where we have our different cartilages. And under elastic cartilage, you can also put a note, also includes, still on camera, yes, also includes the epiglottis. Perfect. Okay? Excuse me? Yes, we're going to do that. All right, everybody got this part done. If you don't have pencils or pens with you that are colored, try to do it when you get home, just as a quick reference to show where each one is located. Or you can borrow some later. All right, let's get to our exit ticket from yesterday. Everybody good with the diagram? Shonda, you got it? Are you going to do it later? Yep, you got it? Okay, perfect. Yes, December 7th, our exit ticket. Let me get it out. December 6th, rather. Where's the 6th? Yeah, 6th. Six. 6th, six, six. got it. All right, let's go through our exit ticket from yesterday. Okay, okay. All right, we don't have to go in order. Tell me which one you think you got right. Let's go through it. Francine, you got one filled out? Which one you think is right? You got to read it and give me your answer.
This is from the six, the exit ticket from yesterday. Oh wait, you showed me yours, sorry. I still have it. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me which one you're gonna do. Read it, I don't know which one you're talking about. A. Most elastic fibers, okay, which one is it? A, not quite. Ted, what you got? C. C. I mean, B, B. B, thank you. The most elastic fibers are gonna be found in elastic cartilage. The most elastic fibers are gonna be found in elastic cartilage. All right, what you got, Dale? Um, for number two, which type of cartilage is found in the midline of the body? I yep. Said, I said C. Fiber cartilage, excellent. Pubic symphysis and also our intervertebral disc. What you got, Ted? I said, uh, what's the name of the flap that covers the, uh, was it larynx? Larynx, yep. Larynx, when we fall through the water, I said B. Epiglottis, excellent. What you got, Talia? I said, which of the following is not a cartilage and with C? It's made of less cartilage. Oh, it's not true with cartilage? Okay, you're changing your answer? Yes, because I'm going to get Okay, so what's your answer? Uh, Thank you.